First of all, I would like to say welcome to my teaching, all of you. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, I also would like to say thank to the Bodhicitta Sangha uh, for all the help that you have provided to get everything uh, ready for uh, this uh, weekend uh, retreat, uh, Vipassana and Shamatha uh, retreat. Uh, and I'm very uh, happy to uh, have this good opportunity to talk about uh, Vipassana uh, meditation uh, and also Shamatha. Uh, and also I would like to <clears throat> share with you uh, my practices and experiences and my understanding about uh, Buddhism. Uh, I studied uh, uh, year by year uh, since I was uh, seven years old. Uh, so uh <clears throat> I would like to share you, I mean uh, it's two days uh, not much uh, time, but uh, uh, during these two days, uh, I will share you about uh, the Vipassana meditation, uh, what I understand, and how I receive these teachings from uh, my uh, amazing uh, teachers. Uh, so, uh, very, very happy. Uh, to have uh, this good opportunity to talk about uh, Vipassana uh, with all of you. Uh, and in this retreat, I will teach you uh, most, I mean, how to practice uh, about Shamatha uh, and Vipassana, or the union of the Shamatha and Vipassana, uh, because I think uh, uh, it is very important uh, to no, uh, because uh, many people uh, kind of misunderstand uh, what is Vipassana really. So, <clears throat> uh, I will teach you about Vipassana. Uh, and uh, so, this is kind of short retreat, uh, but uh, when you read it with a group, um, uh, it is uh, important that you create the best uh, possible uh, conditions uh, for your retreat. Uh, make sure that while uh, your body is uh, in the in the retreat room, um, your mind doesn't wander uh, back home or uh, somewhere else. You know, so your body and mind should be uh, focused on the same thing. So uh, that's, that's the most important uh, uh, because uh, if you, uh, your body here and you think in some, something else, then uh, your retreat uh, is not so beneficial, you know, benefit for, uh, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, even though you are here, but uh, uh, I mean, the retreat means we are allowed to meditate. So meditate, meditation is about uh, working with your mind, right? So uh, you have to kind of uh, control your mind. So make sure uh, your body and your mind uh, uh, should be focused on uh, one thing. So that's the most important. Uh, I always say that if you have uh, mm, any problems, uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, just to let go uh, during this retreat or during your meditation, because this is, if you think in your, uh, the problems, that, that will be really obstacle uh, for the meditation. So just uh, if you can, let go everything and uh, make sure your body and mind same thing uh, the, the, in, 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 in here. Uh, make sure your body is on the cushion, Patron, which say that. Make sure your mind is in your body, 
uh, make sure uh, the peacefulness in your mind. So uh, that's very important. Uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, one of the most important is correcting your motivation. Uh, uh, you should feel I'm so fortunate uh, to have this perfect human life um, in uh, which I have the opportunity to practice, right? Therefore, no matter what sort of uh, the samsaric experiences I have during this retreat, uh, be they good or bad, I shall control my mind and this retreat benefit for myself and also for other beings. So this is how you correct your motivation, right? So uh, whatever you do, uh, big or small, uh, doesn't matter. It depends uh, your motivation. Uh, it depends your intention. So if you have a good motivation, good intention, then whatever you do, it's uh, perfect. Uh, and uh, if you have a, a bad motivation, uh, doesn't matter you read it or you meditate or it's not much uh, benefit uh, for you and for others. So that's why mm, the first you have to uh, correct your motivation just I told you. <coughs> and then uh, uh, the great yogi uh, Padamba uh, said that uh, there are four things uh, you must pay attention uh, if you want to do a perfect Retreat. Otherwise, uh, your retreat will be uh, kind of almost uh, uh, useless, you know. So, the first is the power of body. He said the first is the power of body. If you are sick or uh, powerless body, then you have lost uh, the power of body. And the second is power of speech. If you speak ordinary sort of conversation uh, during, the, during the meditation section and then you have uh, sort of directly uh, interrupted the, the power. Uh, so that's not good. And uh, the third is power of mind, of course. Mm, if you lost your mind, then you cannot concentration and uh, practice meditation. Uh, and the fourth is power of energy. If there is a negative energy during your retreat or meditation, then it is also difficult to meditate and develop your mind. So therefore, uh, these four powers are actually uh, important. And uh, <clears throat> in general, the practice meditation section about an hour. Mm. Because if, if a section is so short uh, and you will do it very well and uh, short section gives you sort of much uh, energy. Uh, so uh, you might uh, sort of don't want to stop meditating when you are feel good. Uh, you want to continue uh, meditating, uh, but if you do that, the next um, section uh, you will almost feel the opposite and don't want to meditate. So that's why a uh, short section uh, help uh, give you really very power sort of energy. It, if you have a good uh, meditation section and then just stop very short section and then uh, the next your meditation section very good because uh, you feel you want to more more and more meditate you know so a short section good for beginners and advanced you, you know both short section is really good so <clears throat> uh, uh, my teacher told me uh, actually uh, 18 sections a day if you are a beginner but uh, we have uh, uh, here um, uh, four sections right four sections uh, a day 
uh, morning two and then afternoon two. So I hope that would be fine. Uh, when the section begins, uh, there must be absolutely do not talk uh, or uh, disturb the members of your group. Uh, if you want you sort of uh, uh, usually I mean if you want to sort of uh, do three presentations uh, it is good for sort of to remember uh, whichever in Latin beans inspires you the most uh, or uh, you can remember three jewels if you are a Buddhist, you know, uh, before you sit down, you, <coughs> you know, meditate, just uh, do uh, three prostrations if you want. Uh, uh, and uh, then if you don't want, that's just fine. Uh, then uh, start thinking like during this meditation, I will uh, recognize my mind completely in order to uh, attain um, the enlightenment for the sake of all beings, right? And then start thinking about uh, bodhicitta uh, with the opening prayers, right? May all sentient beings have happiness. So this is actually, uh, it reminds you, uh, uh, correct your motivation. Uh, and uh, mm, I think in a group uh, retreat, uh, uh, everybody benefits from shared good energy. Uh, very good energy and help each other and uh, I think you are extremely uh, fortunate you know uh, um, uh, so I think uh, group meditation uh, retreat or medit very good good energy uh, so that's very good so so you need to know <clears throat> very clearly right why you are retreating and to make sure that your motivation is strong and correct. It doesn't matter whether or not you uh, sort of receive all the realizations of enlightenment. Uh, it's enough that you're trying to uh, control your mind and relax and try to purify your negative karmas uh, in this retreat. Uh, so we are Dharma practitioner and some of you uh, practice about Dharma a uh, long time and some of you may be just beginner uh, but practice of Dharma means that uh, we should be able to uh, benefit from what we have heard and it is not like uh, uh, listen to a story I think it is very important to know uh, what is your sort of long-term goal and to make sure that your intention uh, or made it motivation it um, to benefit for everybody. Uh, so that's I think uh, uh, very important. And now how should we practice? Uh, first uh, uh, first of all, I would like to teach you, I, I, I'm, I'm sure m many of you uh, already understand uh, about uh, shamatha because we have, uh, we have done many, many times practice shamatha um, every Sundays, uh, even though with me, uh, I uh, remember you and I know many of you, so uh, you are very good about shamatha, <coughs> but maybe uh, some of you, I don't know. So, uh, first, uh, uh, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about shamatha and vipassana. So, uh, I am going to give you some idea or some characters of uh, what necessary things uh, when you practice meditation about uh, shamatha. Uh, and Vipassana uh, in general. 
a great teacher um, called Kamala Shila, uh, Indian master. He said, uh, it is uh, clear that practitioners need to rely on this prerequisite in, the, in order to practice uh, shamatha and vipassana. So there are five character uh, restricts. Uh, the first, uh, it is located uh, where you can easily find food and you should be in a healthy place that is uh, not really uh, externally cold or hot, you know, it's very uh, important also. Uh, that's the first uh, characteristic. Um, and second, it is not near uh, negative people and any fear of sort of danger, you know. And third, it is free from any kind of uh, disease, you know. And fourth, uh, surrounded good sort of companions who uh, who have the same view and behavior as you. Uh, then fifth is the the place where we stay should also be free from a lot of uh, sort of activities and a large number of people. Uh, it, it, it would be sort of disturb your meditation. So these are the sort of uh, usually, usually we call outer, outer conditions of where you uh, should stay or how you practice. Outer, we call outer conditions. Uh, it is also important when meditating, you should make sure that uh, your body and <clears throat> mind are very comfortable and relaxed, right? Uh, you should, you should, you should, uh, you should breathe very softly, gently, and naturally without causing any noise, and without sort of uh, yeah any noise. And uh, uh, and in addition, you should correct your motivation for practicing. So these are the we call the inner conditions of body and mind when you are practicing. And there is another very important to understand when you practice. Uh, to practice uh, satisfaction, you, uh, which means you have what you need and that is enough, right? It's really sport uh, if you practice these two things, uh, practice satisfaction uh, and, uh, uh, and also another is limiting. Uh, limiting your desire, not being excessively attached to many things. So these two, if you practice these two, if you remember these two, always help you. Uh, it's really, really uh, helps you. So these are the this this. Uh, if you practice these two, I'm sure you will be uh, definitely happy uh, with your uh, meditation, with your life, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, it doesn't mean that sometimes people misunderstand when I say practice satisfaction and uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, limiting your desire. Uh, it's very common in Buddhism. Uh, it's very, people really, if people really want to practice, first focus on these two things. Uh, so if I say this, people, sometimes people think, oh, then I can't because, you know, but it doesn't mean that you cannot have anything, right? You cannot have anything if you practice about Buddhism. Mm, Buddha uh, did not say that. Uh, but if you don't practice satisfaction and limiting desire, then sometimes you, you feed uh, your attachment and uh, it makes you are suffering. Uh, and so practice shamatha and vipassana are very important. 
because they are the roots of all meditation. Uh, the Sanskrit word for shamatha is translated into Tibetan uh, as we call it shirni, shirni. The first, uh, the shamatha, uh, two syllables, right? Shama, shama. Actually, shama means peace. Um, Sanskrit in Tibetan we call it shir, uh, means peace. Uh, means that the mind is not distracted, right? Because when the mind is overcome with uh, anger, uh, sadness, or craving, uh, it becomes distracted. Uh, but in shamatha, uh, the mind is very uh, relaxed and at ease without any difficulty. Uh, so that's why we call peace, shama. Uh, and then third syllable, ta, uh, in Tibetan ni, uh, means uh, stability. Uh, uh, it means that the mind is not involved uh, in forced activity or difficulty, but dwells in a state of peace. So, shamatha is actually the mind resting uh, one-pointedly on an object, and in which the mind is not uh, distracted to external object other than the object of your mental fo focus and meditation. Uh, your mind remains stable, uh, focused on the object, so not many, uh, not many thoughts arise and then mind becomes very stable and calm. So there are, you know, obviously a lot of things that can go wrong with meditation, right? If you cannot control your mind. So, so you, you, you might think that shamatha is, uh, is a state of no thoughts. Um, it's uh, perhaps like a stone, uh, but this is incorrect. Because in shamatha meditation, the mind is very calm and stable and also very clear. Uh, this clarity is called vipassana. And uh, uh, is definitely developed through shamatha. Uh, if your mind has many thoughts, and cannot focus on the object of intention uh, and can't control the mind because, uh, because of the distraction of thoughts, right? So you don't have, then uh, you don't have the shamatha meditation. Uh, if the mind can focus one pointly without this distraction, uh, then you have shamatha meditation. Shamatha meditation is absolutely necessary, not only in the ultimate sense, but also in the short term uh, by sort of bring great benefit uh, when we practice it. So when we have not practiced a meditation, our thoughts process are entirely beyond our control. So we have both uh, virtues and negative thoughts. So different thoughts are, uh, you know, thoughts of love and compassions and uh, bodhicitta, altruism. Uh, and negative thoughts are like thoughts of attachment, anger, ignorance. But as we practice gradually, uh, we increase, we are uh, starting to recognize how many thoughts are arising in our mind all the time before we were not aware of this. And slowly 
we get freedom from these thoughts. So that is the ultimate benefit of shamatha meditation. Understand? Uh, uh, there is a great yogi, uh, Malaripa, maybe you know, uh, it's a very famous uh, yogi in Tibet. Uh, and he practiced shamatha, um, I think, six months. And uh, after six months, uh, six months, he just he uh, achieved uh, shamatha meditation. So his mind is just stable, relaxed, and calm. Uh, so if you really practice shamatha uh, diligently, then it's not so difficult. Maybe a year, maybe two years, you can. Uh, established, you know, uh, then your mind will easy, uh, whatever you want, you can control if you are achieved, uh, practice shamatha. So, now another important, okay, this, um, important, uh, this these, I will tell you three important things, okay? I mean, everything is important, but <laughs> especially three important. If you really want to practice, medi uh, practice meditation, uh, 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 daily life, daily or your life, these three are very important, okay? So, uh, of course, uh, the first how you start uh, your meditation, Many of you know this, but uh, I want to make sure that you really understand. So first, it's you, you start how you start your meditation, and second, how you maintain the practice meditation, and the, the, the finally, uh, the third is how you finish your practice. So these three. So first, of course, the before beginning uh, gave rise. Bodhicitta is a skillful means to ensure that the action becomes source of goodness uh, in the future, right? Uh, that's we call it correct your motivation. So first thing to do when you meditate is to correct your motivation. So this means to correct your motivation means uh, there is not a single being in samsara. Uh, this means ocean of suffering. So tell yourself that uh, it is for their well-being that I'm going to practice the profound Dharma. So it is important to have this attitude each time you start uh, your meditation practice. So this is how you start your meditation. And then second is to have a mind free from conceptualization. Which means to practice without distraction. And practice without losing focus. For example, if you let, if you let come lots of thoughts, then uh, they uh, destroy your inner peace. Then you will lose your main practice. Right? Whatever you do, you should try to practice with a concentrated mind and with mindfulness so that the merit will not be destroyed by circumstances. That's how you remain your practice. Finally, at the end, when you have done anything that is good or virtuous, must be, uh, you should dedicate um, for the sake of all beings. This is how you finish your meditation. So these three things you should keep in your mind and uh, remember when you meditate. It doesn't matter who you are, uh, you are Buddhist or you are whatever, you have to have these three things very important practice. It's in general uh, very important. Now, uh, 
now we're going to uh, meditate okay uh, so all right <clears throat> little bit teaching before we start meditate again are you comfortable with uh, this meditation or a little bit difficult <laughs> comfortable yes <laughs> difficult Yes. <laughs> yep, usually um, if it is difficult then uh, you should practice shamatha more um, because it will help. Actually, um, how do we start? Does one start with shamatha or with vipassana or with both at the same time? The answer is that one starts with shamatha because it is the base of meditation and vipassana is based upon shamatha. For example, shamatha is like the wall and vipassana is like the painting or picture on the wall. So first you need to establish shamatha meditation and then vipassana meditation. Eventually both of them practice in union. Uh, Indian uh, master Shantadeva says one needs to have Vipassana that is based on shamatha meditation, a very peaceful mind. So that's why uh, shamatha is very important. Uh, you will understand when you meditate, um, if your mind is very peace, stable, that means really good shamatha. Uh, so so that that's why because shamatha uh, has been achieved all analytical meditation as well as all virtuous activities have great power because the mind is engaged in its own object of um, observation without being distracted by an, anything else. My teacher told uh, us that uh, shamatha is a really important meditation. Uh, and it is the, the basis of uh, many other types of meditation. It is the kind of foundation. In order, whatever you want to practice, you have to have a peaceful mind. Otherwise you can't. Uh, you can't concentrate. And uh, the shamatha is really uh, helps that. Calm your mind. But if you only meditate on shamatha uh, without vipassana or other things, mm -hmm. then this will not help you so much, right? It's uh, the foundation, the shamatha is the foundation, but only shamatha, not so good. I mean, uh, I mean for example, uh, say that uh, you, have a, you have a glass of water, um, with a uh, lots of dirt and uh, uh, particles in it. If you do not shake it up, the particles separate to the bottom and the water uh, becomes very clear, right? 
but particles still exist and they have not been eliminated still there similarly when you meditate only shamatha then the negative emotions are still there even though you have a very peaceful mind your negative emotions there and will become active again when you are not meditating when you experience sort of bad circumstance it seems immediately that your negative emotions are still there and exist right once you go to meditate you have a peaceful very gentle very nice maybe something happened and you get angry right right away you get angry that means you even though you have you are practicing shamatha but your negative emotions there you can't uh, diminish all your negative emotions through meditation on shamatha it's glass of water you shake it and then dirt and uh, unclear and the, the particles and come out and the water will be very unclean like that so <clears throat> so that's why um, not only shamatha right if the mind can rest on an object object then the mind becomes very workable and very stable uh, so we can do whatever we want we can use our mind to increase our wisdom and understanding so that's why also shamatha is good when your mind will peace and workable uh, which means that you can do whatever you want uh, with the mind if you want to send it somewhere it will go right if you want to stay it in a particular spot it will stay there that means you control your mind whatever you want you want to think in they they will think you don't want to think just to relax they relax that means if you your shamatha established whatever you want with your mind you can right now we can't we will just sit down and meditate on your thoughts arise you can do that that means you cannot control your mind that means you are not established shamatha so that means you have to practice shamatha more So, <clears throat> uh, as we know from experience, our mind normally just wander off somewhere by itself. So we need to have complete control of our mind uh, in order to see the nature of things with, a, uh, with the, the understanding of Vipassana. That's why shamatha meditation should be achieved first. So Buddha taught these two uh, practices and they are the only methods by which we can achieve all the levels of concentration. And the, the, the great master, uh, uh, Indian master Bas Pandu, said that uh, in genuine shamatha, the mind is able to rest in the mind. And the mind becomes so relaxed that it rests in it itself. Just as it is in nature way, uh, undistracted by thoughts. And the mind becomes stable and peaceful and relaxed. So I think uh, you understand in this, you know, uh, you have been practiced shamatha quite a lot, right? 
and maybe you are ready to practice about shamatha and the, the vipassana. But I'm not so sure where we, where you are, you know. Uh, so one about uh, the shamatha, uh, the um, there is a great teacher Kamala Shila. If you have that book, uh, Stages of Meditation, he explained. Uh, both shamatha and vipassana, but especially shamatha is very well. And he said that there are two characteristics that arise from shamatha. The first characteristic is uh, attraction to shamatha because one feels it is important and naturally does it because uh, a state of joy. Uh, the second is that the mind is completely trained, which means you are not sort of fighting your thoughts or distractions. But, but I think both these are not good characters, you know. Um, when, when shamatha is developed, uh, removing the distraction of thoughts leads to uh, perceiving things very clearly and distinctly, which is Vipassana, right? So this is uh, how um, Kamala Shila describes the nature of Shamatha and Vipassana. There are so many, I think, meditation in Buddhism. So many different, but I think shamatha and vipassana is the, the essence of, you know, uh, the meditation. It's so important because once the the, the, the mind is stable and becomes sort of unmoved, just of instruction of shamatha. So there are actually five different stages of shamatha. Okay. This, uh, this section I'm going to teach you about uh, shamatha. Uh, I mean, these are very important uh, to know. They are kind of uh, five uh, experience or five uh, uh, characteristics of shamatha. So you have to know this. Then you understand where, where you are. How the stages, how it looks like the stages of shamatha meditation. So the first stage is called the experience of instability or wavering. Understand? Did you say wavering? Wavering. Uh -huh. Movement, right? Instability. This means when you begin to meditate, the first experience the mind is very unstable with many thoughts arising right when you're beginner when you start meditate uh, on shamatha there are so many thoughts good thoughts bad thoughts and so this is like uh, you know waterfall uh, rushing off cliff so strong in meditation, it seems you have sort of never had so many thoughts and oh, I'm getting worse because of my meditation, you know. But in fact, it is not developing more, more thoughts, rather before you have sort of begin to meditate. You didn't think about how many thoughts you had, right? And actually, meditation is the beginning of uh, dealing with your mind because you become aware of your thoughts. Usually, we just uh, ignore our thoughts, right? So that's why this is uh, the experience of instability, shamatha, the first beginner. And then you do continually still don't lose your confidence. Even though you have difficult meditation, you have to do sort of, uh, you know, again and again, continually. 
you begin to have a second stage is, is called experience of attainment attainment if you stopped when you meditate on shamatha so difficult so many thoughts you stopped you never get the next experience of the stages right so you you just uh, you just really do even though difficult to meditate just do continually you're better and better that's for sure so then you will see the next experience of uh, the shamatha it is the attainment with this experience you begin to feel that you have accomplished good meditation so this experience is like a, like a, a, how you say mountain uh, river or the, the, the stream right it's a, it's a, uh, the river is still rough right with many sort of webs but it isn't as powerful and it is not like waddle for rushing off a cliff right it's a little bit gentle than the, 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 this this experience it little bit easier than the first meditation the shamatha meditate right that's what we call attainment experience of attainment then you do continually again do meditate then you get the third stage is called experience of familiarization this level of meditation becomes easier and state of meditative stability without thoughts arising but it is not as rough and uh, uh, sort of unconnected as the second stages of attainment it's much better now that's the third and then fourth stage is called the experience of stability because there is a continuous state of stability without uh, a flow of uh, uh, disturbing thoughts at this stage you have reached the uh, the level of stability in which you have control over your mind this is experience uh, is like an ocean that is calm and uh, without uh, many uh, webs and then fifth stage is called the experience of complete stability complete stability and is the the final stage in which you are not disturbed by any kind of experience this experience that arises in in this fifth level are bliss clarity and uh, the absence of thoughts so this five this final maladipa did this uh, within six months eventually he got the fifth experience completely stability experience of then you think you are really good meditator <laughs> you really get somewhere <laughs> you think you are not really just an ordinary person <laughs> but mm -mm, more vipassana <laughs> vipassana is still here not there yet <laughs> you know <laughs> if, for example while you meditate and you you might experience a great sensations of uh, sort of what do you call it bliss very joy you know and uh, later this you know um, the joy or bliss uh, disappear or one day uh, suddenly a great clarity arises in your meditation 
uh, Tibetan uh, masters, they all been through this, all experience in establish both shamatha and vipassana. So they have this great uh, experience and instructions. So that they, they say one day you suddenly get a sort of clarity and arise in your meditation, in your mind. At that point, you really see, uh, you really um, understand what you are thinking. Uh, you really see, actually think, what is behind uh, of this house, this building. You can see far ways. Um, it's true. One time I, uh, we went, uh, my new teacher uh, taught us great perfection. And uh, we went to uh, um, far away from his monastery, uh, lots of activities. And so we just f uh, went to a very um, uh, peaceful uh, place and uh, give, uh, he gave us uh, some teachings. And, uh, one time he talked about this shamatha, um, the experience, three experience. And one time he really talked about this clarity. He said, I, I can see there is a, in Tibet, there is lots of mountains, you know. And I can see behind this mountain there is a guy who lost his cows. Mm -hmm. he's, he's looking. Mm -hmm. He's working on there. <coughs> Of course, we don't know where, what is he talking about, you know. So, I think, I believe that he really, he really see that, because there is no need to lie, you know. We just, we just believe that. I don't know, but I think that happened to so many meditators. So that's experience clarity. Oh, no, first the beliefs, right? Is it beliefs? No. Bliss. Bliss? How you Bliss. say the pronouns? Okay, you understand that, right? Okay, that's the first you get. When you achieved this shamatha, the fifth experience, uh, the, the experience of the, uh, the, the uh, complete, complete sta stability. After that, you get these three experiences. One is the bliss, one is the clarity, uh, and then also uh, you may experience a state uh, devoid of con conceptual thoughts. No conceptual thoughts. I mean, um, devoid of conceptual thoughts. That's very close to uh, the emptiness. So these are the three kinds of experience that can arise in shamatha meditation, definitely. Uh, the great teacher Asanga, uh, the Indian master, the Buddha student, says that first you experience a very uh, subtle sensation and you don't know uh, if it is in the body or it is in the mind. And you just feel a very, a very subtle, sort of pleasant uh, sensation. Later on it becomes stronger and more clear, and you know it is a definite pleasurable sensation. Still later on it becomes very strong and you experience bliss and comfort. That, that is the, the, the kind of sign when you are, you really, uh, you achieved uh, meditation about shamatha, you will experience this. You become very confident of your meditation at this point. Uh, but, You should not become attached to or, you know, um, you should not think that I'm a very good meditator, you know, you know, proud of this sensation and think that it is sort of special. Uh, 
spatial. I mean, it is spatial, but uh, uh, if you attach to this experience, then they will go away. You know? Um, or you can't develop your meditation anymore. If you, oh, I'm a bad, uh, special person. I'm, uh, I have this special, uh, you know, amazing experiences. So now I'm uh, um, uh, almost become a Lantern, uh, you know, almost become a Buddha or something like that. Then that's we call it a very obstacle, I mean, uh, attachment to it. Uh, so uh, this will be obstacle. So you just uh, let them go, you know. <laughs> Normally, when we have a good, uh, good meditative experience, we think this is wonderful, right? We think this is wonderful, and I must be sort of a, a becoming a good one. <laughs> and then, when we have a bad meditative experience, uh, on the other hand, we think uh, this is uh, very bad. You know, I'm obviously doing uh, everything wrong. Or, you know, I can't do anything. So, but whatever experience arises, good or bad, we should let them go. That's all we need. We should let them go and just continue to meditate. Then really, no problem. There's uh, no obstacles. Especially when you uh, shamatha, your shamatha meditation, really good, and then you will definitely experience all these three, just I told you, right? Bliss, and uh, especially the clarity, especially you like that, clarity. You can see what you are thinking. Uh, you can see what, what will happen. It looks like, like a clairvoyant, you know? Uh, then you are really attached to it. You want that. Mm -hmm. That's not good. So just to let go, you know, just let go everything. Then, uh, easy to understand Vipassana. If you get there, then just really easy, very easy. You don't have to uh, very hard uh, meditate. Just, uh, you know, uh, when you as, as soon as you sit and meditate, and then uh, just uh, there come out, and then uh, you need to a little bit move on, then that's the Vipassana. So then you do this more and more, and then you're meditating better and better, you know. That means you are, you know, the main point is we have to diminish all the negative emotions. That's the point, right? Not really the, the, the main point is not uh, how peaceful mind you want, how they are, what do you call it, the, the, the relaxed and comf you know, calm. Uh, this is not the point. The point is you have to diminish uh, the, the, the you know, afflictions and purify all your negative emotions. That is the main point. But in order to diminish all afflictions, you have to have a uh, you know, a calm mind, a peaceful mind. Otherwise, we can't uh, do it. So, uh, they're really uh, related to each other. In order to diminish your afflictions, you have to have a calm mind. And also, uh, you have to understand clearly, right? So that's the shamatha and vipassana. So shamatha and vipassana both uh, really will help you diminish and purify your negative emotions. Then you completely diminished your negative emotions that we called Buddha. That is the uh, final destination. Then really you are there, so you become a Buddha. So in order to become a Buddha, there are so many levels, right? Uh, ten parts. We have ten parts, ten bumis we call. Are you really good about shamatha? Shamatha 
very important, really good foundation, very good. Whatever you practice, you should practice with shamatha. Uh, and once you have a shamatha, you know, uh, then uh, vipassana is not difficult, not so difficult. Then, if you have a good shamatha, uh, then your teacher really uh, point out the nature of your mind, uh, not like in group, you know, individually. Um, this is, there is so many ways the teacher point out your nature mind. So then you just recognize it and then that's all. But if you don't have shamatha meditation, uh, you don't have peaceful mind, don't have, uh, you know, calm mind, then even though um, you recognize the nature mind, it's, it doesn't stay there. Always your thoughts dis destroy it, your nature mind. I mean, your, yeah. So that's why um, my second, third root teacher, Anzam Dukpa Rinpoche, whenever we go there, receive his teaching, first uh, he lets us meditate shamatha two years. Two years. That doesn't mean, he said, that doesn't mean you are really achieved uh, established shamatha, but you have to at least you have to practice sh meditate on shamatha um, two years, and then he said, "Come back, and then I will give you the vipassana meditation." So two years means not like here. <laughs> Here we uh, one day maybe meditate uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, right? Maybe one hour, two hours. That's really long meditation. <laughs> but in Tibet, in monastery, day by day, day by day, year by year, month by month, that two years really a long. <laughs> All right. Any questions? We should meditate on uh, together shamatha and vipassana, okay? Um, when we d diminish our negative emotions, then more clarity arises, more bliss arises, and sometimes no, no conceptual thought. What happens with skillful means during that time? Is your skillful means also increasing? Your, yes, your capacity increasing? definitely. Yeah. Your wisdom and your capacity you don't have capacity as a Buddha, right? Still your capacity is kind of limit, but uh, definitely, yes. Yeah? yeah? Before, uh, not this earlier, mentioned this your thought. Do you think about your thoughts? Do you when... Uh, you, I said you, you should try just to be uh, relaxed, right? Um, focus on your uh, nature mind. If you cannot, uh, this means your thoughts bother you all the time and it's difficult, then investigate. I said investigate. How do you investigate, I guess is what I'm... All right. I'm thinking now uh, the weather. So the weather comes in my mind. That we call thoughts, right? My thought is how is the weather looks like <laughs> outside. Mm. So where it comes from? Where? And think about it. Where it comes from? It's inside your body or outside your body or between somewhere where it is where's the thought come from not the weather no <laughs> the weather is thought right right weather is thought let's weather is outside or this cold and cold and hot we call that. Uh, don't go there, otherwise you will never find water also. But <laughs> let's say the thought of water, where, where it comes from. Investigate means where it comes from, where it go. 
So you just 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 really examine that. And then what happened? After that, what happened? You can find something. Then you sh- you should more investigate on that. If you don't find, then just to relax there and meditate on that. That I mean, understand? Just to, just to, you know, um, just to, oh, it's, it's I can't find. No, it's I can't find. Now look how it looks like, how it looks like your mind now, and then you just, uh, just to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Nature mind is the the seed of Buddha. Uh, the nature of mind is is uh, always pure, um, always there. Uh, yeah, this is very. Secret. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I told you, right? We have to. Um, we have to. We have to practice preliminaries uh, in order to practice on this. It's like when we say we're pointing to the moon. When you say the nature of mind is like pointing to the, to the moon, it's like we're not there, we can't, you know, or it's, it's there, and it's pure. It's pure, it's there. Yeah. That means uh, we all have, we all have this. That's why we are practice, right? We have to practice because we own, we possess this nature mind. If we don't have this nature mind, almost useless our meditation. What's the point? We meditate, right now it's peaceful, but then after, afterwards, the bad circumstance, we have some problems, our mind's terrible. We can't control. Angry, or you see things you like, or you know, something really difficult. But if we have this, the Buddha nature, or the nature mind, we can diminish all these uh, negative emotions because this is, the nat- this is not nature of the mind. If you really want the nature mind, you are, you need, uh, you need um, um, see the nature mind. You need, in order to see the nature mind, you have to uh, diminish all negative uh, emotions. Then, yes, then there is a there is a really point. The key point is we have a, a Buddha nature. We have, doesn't matter who you are, doesn't this Buddha nature we call everybody, human beings, any moles, everybody who has a consciousness or who has a mind, then they have this Buddha nature. Yep, second, third question. Yes. Uh, yes, this means, you know, uh, same kind of question, but this means uh, you have a Buddha nature, but you can't use it now because of the, uh, the obstacles. Uh, but once you have, you uh, recognize the nature, uh, the only not recognize, you familiarize, right? Familiarize always, all the time, then your capacity uh, is limitless. And you have uh, great compassion, 
but not just the compassion. If you uh, recognize the nature of mind, you have a great compassion, union uh, I mean, with emptiness. That is the, the point. The union of great compassion, emptiness will come out if you uh, recognize the nature of mind. Yes? You said that it takes a teacher uh, to show the student his own nature of mind. That sounds like something you can't really write down in a book or explain to somebody. Is that, was that your experience? Exactly, yes. It's a, uh, no, it's really that. That's, that's true. It's a, uh, I mean, I can't actually, I can't exper I can't explain you uh, the, the nature of mind. I just, uh, I just, uh, you know, just hit you. That, <laughs> I just, bam, that is your nature of mind. You understand now? <laughs> so, uh, there, there are many ways you can, uh, you can recognize it. Really, but um, uh, if you have uh, the uh, negative emotions, it's very difficult to recognize it. And uh, sometimes uh, you hear about this, doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense, but because you have uh, negative emotions, <coughs> it doesn't let you understand. So that's why you have to purify. Purify first the negative emotions. If you purify all negative emotions, that's all. Then, then that is your nature mind. But you will experience so differently. You see things never you see before. At that point. Maybe at that point you see me, I'm a Buddha. <laughs> Maybe you see, when you see a dog, you see a human being. It's, an, it's, a, it's a very different, individually experienced very differently. Very differently. But that doesn't mean you completely changed. You are still in this world. You are still human beings, great human beings. But you, you have a really great capacity to help others and to help yourself. Great compassion, great love and kindness. Great means this means great means limitless. <coughs> you are really a love everybody. You are really taking care of everybody. So really amazing. Uh, the nature mind is really amazing. When you are uh, uh, ready to um, practice it. It's really amazing. I have that experience. I mean, I, mean, I, I did the, uh, everything, right? Practice preliminaries, investigate mind. It's just, uh, it's not shortly, uh, many, many years. Uh, but once I'm done, then, and then uh, my teacher pointed my negative, the nature of mind, uh, <laughs> I, I just uh, really enjoyed it. It's, um, it's so happy. <coughs> It's, it's give me so uh, energy and uh, enthusiasm and uh, confident and what I say, what should I say? Like it's really good. That's why uh, you have to really practice um, preliminaries. You have to practice preliminaries. Some teacher really uh, don't want you. Uh, talk about your experience with 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 everybody. You just uh, let your teacher know. Only your you let your teacher knows you are what you your experience, right? That makes sense. I think that's really good because why you why you talk about your experience with other people just to because they if you have a good experience if you have a bad experience they can't do anything, right? So then you don't want to 
there is no need to uh, talk about your experience with other people, but you have to have tell your teacher, because then uh, if this is good or if this is not good, uh, then your teacher give you uh, correct, you know, uh, give you the instructions, uh, whatever he can help you, right? If you need help, so I should say, uh, don't. Tell any experience about uh, your meditation uh, with uh, other people. I mean, if you want, then. But I think uh, it's sometimes the teacher says if you tell uh, your experience uh, other people, then uh, that's uh, that's obstacle. Uh, you can uh, you can you cannot you you cannot really develop your meditation if you uh, if you tell them. It's kind of obstacles. So just keep secret and then give uh, tell tell your teacher. Is that your question? Yeah yeah. All right, okay. You. You're welcome. <coughs> All right. Same meditation. It look the 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 this you have to um, this meditation you have to um, look first kind of when you meditate. Um, sometimes it, it it's a, it's better you should keep your eyes open, not really open, but. Uh, very slightly open um, and um, don't focus when I open this my eyes see the flower but I'm not focusing on this um, I focus on inside even though I open my eyes but I focus on my my mind uh, my mind, which means when I say focus on my mind, that doesn't mean I'm focused on my thoughts. I focus on the essence of my mind. Open your eye, and then you uh, you really you really experience very amazingly nature mind. You. But first, to you sort of, you have to motivate, right? You you have to uh, think about. Okay, I'm I I'm going to look at my mind like that. You have to think that first. Uh, then, without thinking, right? Without thinking, just looking at your mind very deeply. You really go uh, deeply inside, inside very deeply inside, not just to look it, just to deep inside with uh, open open your eyes um, and then you will see. Understand? When I say deep, look deep, look deeply inside, you understand that? That is the key point. You, if you don't know, if you don't understand that, you, you will not get it. Understand? When I say deep, Look deeply in your mind, with your eyes. That's key point. Just to, just to really relax and uh, let go your hope, or worry. This too, just to, oh I can meditate, or maybe I hope. Just let go of that and just to look deeply into your mind. And just kind of you feel, sometimes you feel somewhere uh, in your head. And don't attach it to it. <laughs> and just uh, more deeply and what whatever experience you have, just to let go and do it. Let go, deep look, let go, deep look that. That's the key point. All right? <coughs> 